I'll go ahead and call the water board meeting for October 19, 2020 to order. Heather, can you do the roll call? Sure. Todd Williams. Here. Allison Gould. Here. Kathy Peterson. Here. Scott Holwick. Here. Roger Lang. Here. Ken Hewson. Here. Nelson Tipton. Here. Wes Lowry. Here. Kevin Bowden. Here. Heather McIntyre is here. Um, Francie Jaffe. Here. And Price Hadley. Here. And David Bell is coming in. And Council Member Martin. I know I saw her. Is she there? She is. OK. All right, um, with that, the next item is approval of the September 21st, 2020 Water Board meeting minutes. Um, has everybody had a chance to review those? Any questions, comments? If not, we need a motion to approve those. So moved. We have a motion by Roger, is there a second? A second. Okay, Allison seconded that. Um, further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, next item, item four is the water status report. Um, Wes, are you doing that one? I do have that. So yeah. the flow of the St. Brain at Lions Gauge at 8 a.m. today was 10 CFS with a 124 year historic average of 36 CFS for this date. The call on the St. Vrain Creek is the James Ditch, admin 8,756, with a priority date of June 2nd, 1868. And the call on the main stem is the South Platte River at, uh, on, <clears throat> for the South Platte River is Pruitt Inlet Canal, with an admin number of 31,423.29219. And its priority date is January 13th, 1936. Rail Price Reservoir at Button Rock is currently spilling and we are releasing 10 CFS. Union Reservoirs at 23.7 feet are down approximately 3,000 acre feet. And that's all I have unless there's some questions. Any questions for Wes on the water status report? I don't hear any. Thank you, Wes. Item five is public invited to be heard in special presentations. Um, Heather, if I understand right, there's no public invited to be heard today. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And then Ken, let me know under special presentations. I think we're going to hear from Price, the, the new ranger for the Button Rock Preserve. Is that right, Ken? Um, that's correct. Um, I'd like to introduce Price Hadley, our new senior watershed ranger up at Button Rock. Um, Price comes to us from... Uh, the Aspen area, Pitkin County, where he was the uh, lead supervisory ranger for the for their ranger um, open space program uh, in that area. So, but and prior to that, it actually worked um, here in Boulder County on the front range here. So, he has both local experience and um, some excellent experience where he comes from. So, Price, if you don't mind, just give us a quick rundown on on uh, introduce yourself. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. As Ken said, I came here from uh, six years working as a ranger up in Pitkin County, where the county seat's Aspen. Uh, that gave me a really good insight into kind of the public safety and natural resources. Uh, I've got a formal background in natural resources, a master's degree in public land management. Um, previously, when I lived in the Boulder County area, including in Lyons, I worked for City of Boulder Open Space, did trails work, invasive species, pest control, uh, trail work, worked with youth outdoors. So really excited to be coming full circle and back closer to family and working with a great water team here at City of Longmont. Welcome, Price. Um, I know I don't know if you're going to do it somewhere else, but can you give us an idea, I guess, with regards to the fires that the uh, Cal Wood and um, I know Chimney Park's maybe hopefully further to the north of you there, but maybe just what's happening or what you're seeing in terms of fire activity in the area? 
Yeah, luckily things are fairly calm here at Button Rock. Uh, Miles Churchill and myself have uh, been sticking close to the preserve um, since the fire started. Came in on the weekend, Miles was here. Uh, we closed the preserve on Saturday to the public. That closure is extended indefinitely um, due to the fires to our south and north. Um, currently on the Calwood fire, the fire crews are working from Calwood Education Center clockwise around the northern flank of the Calwood fire, really working through all that incredibly steep topography along the South St. Brain Canyon um, to keep that fire from crossing Highway 7. Uh, it sounded like the, there was some new fire, or not new fire activity, but the most active area of the fire today was to the right of that mouse icon on, uh, that would be east of Button Rock um, along that northern perimeter, right about where you're pointing. Um, the precipitation and humidity that we got yesterday kept the fire growth of Calwood fire pretty negligible. Um, however, they were reporting high winds above 9,000 feet, so they had limited aerial operations today, although we anticipate working with them to support water drops from Ralph Price as soon as they're able to really uh, get airborne again. I've heard some helicopter and fixed wing air traffic today, but um, pretty limited. So all those, uh, all that news is good. So we're continuing to keep our eyes out. Um, we're staying in close contact with all the residents on a daily basis. Um, there's currently no mandatory evac order or evac warning for uh, Longmont Dam Road or CR 80 Button Rock area, um, but we're keeping close tabs on that, um, keeping the closure of the trail system intact and just being ready to support the firefighting efforts in any way that we can. Thank you, Price. Um, one other question, Jason um, gave us a report last month that there was some work that was gonna go on with regards to the outlet. Um, was that, has that been done or what's the schedule for that work? Uh, so Ken can touch on this too, I'm sure, but uh, there is work to be done on the regulatory gate, which is the um, yeah, on the Button Rock Dam. Uh, that project, as my understanding, that's currently um, under delay while they wait to assess the fire danger um, to see if the Cameron Peak fire crosses 34 or the Calwood fire crosses Highway 7. Um, but yeah, that work needs to be done on the regulatory gate on the Button Rock Dam, and that's still uh, waiting for the situation to stabilize. Yeah, and Todd, the uh, the contractor, main contractor, has been engaged. Um, it's Jaron Alt with their sub as a uh, AMS, which is a firm that does some big, large dam outlet work. Um, the, we actually have a pre-construction meeting scheduled for Wednesday with prior to Saturday's fire <laughs> was scheduled to uh, mobilize early to mid week next week. So we'll reassess on Wednesdays. Um, if the Calwood fire hasn't jumped Highway 7, it probably means they're starting to get a handle on it. Plus uh, with the wetter and colder weather coming in this weekend, um, if it doesn't jump Highway 7, we probably be okay by, by the weekend. So um, but we, we'll reassess that um, both Wednesday and at the end of the week. Thanks, Ken. Um, does the board have any other questions for Price or for Ken? I don't hear any. Okay. Um, we'll go ahead and keep moving. Um, next item is agenda revisions and submission of documents. Um, everybody should have received an email this morning with three documents. One was the bonus ditch um, draft water court application. And then there were two items related to the Windy Gap firming project, a memo, and then an up updated allotment contract with proposed changes. Um, I assume everybody got that. If anybody didn't, can they speak up? Okay, looks like we have that. Was there anything else, Ken, in terms of revisions or submission of documents? That was it, it was just those three submittals. Okay, and we'll go over those when we get to the 
the right part of the agenda here. Um, item seven is the development activity. Um, I doesn't look like there is any, is that correct, Wes? Yes, that's correct. There is none for this month, but I do anticipating having some for the board to review next month. Okay, thank you. Item eight is general business. Um, 8A is the 2021 leg legislative guiding water principles. Nelson? Yeah, Todd, I'll go ahead and uh, so um, give a background for, for Allison and, and Scott. So each year um, prior to the start of the legislation session, um, staff, staff, uh, go ahead. They, we, we take the, um, guiding water principles for, uh, uh, staff and city council and water board uses to kind of go over and, uh, kind of guide us on when new legislation bill, bills are, are, uh, brought forward. And so we take a look at those principles and they help us kind of make some decisions on, on, uh, what to, what, how to vote towards that, uh, um, towards that bill. So um, we've brought them, we haven't made any changes the last several years to them. Um, so um, I've talked to uh, Sandy Cedar, assistant city manager, and she still plans on taking the, um, all of the city leg um, legislation principles along with the guiding water principles in December of 2020. So that's about time she does it each year. So we just kind of talked through, if you guys have any questions on them or any changes. Like I said, we haven't changed them for uh, several years now. So um, I'll kind of leave that. Okay, um, does anybody have any, I know Allison and Scott, these are, are new for you. Are there any kind of questions, comments you or any of the other water board has with regards to the proposed water principles? So, so what we do is water board then gives a recommendation to city council and then city council reviews them and, and uh, approves them or moves them forward or whatever they would like to do with them. So Nelson, do you want a motion formally adopting these and recommending them to? Yes, we council? ask for a motion each year, Todd. That's correct. Okay, okay. sounds good. Um, well, I'll open it up for any kind of questions, discussion. Um, and if not, then we need a motion to recommend the proposed guiding water principles to the city council. Todd, I had a quick question. Uh, Nelson, maybe you can answer, but does Longmont um, have a vote and does it participate in uh, the State Affairs Committee at the Water Congress? Um, Ken, do we have a vote? I, I'm not sure what our position is, but Ken? So we're not a we're not a voting member of the state affairs committee. No. Thanks. And maybe just a little um, more background is as we get into the when legislation is actually proposed, those bills that are water related will actually come to the board, um, and we can talk about those individually. I think what you know the obviously the principals do is kind of help to highlight any items that, that maybe should be discussed by the board. And then if, if any of them are inconsistent with the guiding principles, that um, is, is one of the items we'll talk about and maybe recommend to the council of, you know, if we wanna oppose a bill or monitor a bill, that sort of thing. So, you know, that there'll still be some feedback coming back for, I guess, Scott and Allison's benefit. There'll be feedback coming back as the list legislation is proposed, but trying to get the groundwork laid before we get into the legislative season, so. And in, in one comment, when, a lot of times you read those bills and they, um, you know, some of them get real wordy. So then it's good to, it's good. To, a lot of times that, that I do when I take a look at the initial bills, when we're seeing that they're will impact uh, um, our water supply or our, our citizens, then I'll, I'll, I'll reference those guiding water principles and see if there's any of those key words in those bills that are in our principles and, and kind of help, help guide that way. But yeah, Scott, I mean, uh, Todd, you're correct that we uh, we uh, go ahead and bring those bills to a water board. The, the, we, we've kind of changed a little bit the last couple of years. It's been going to the to the Dale's uh, leadership team and then comes to, uh, to, if the bill gets through there for a water board's recommendation to city council, then those are the bills that we bring forward. 
Is that correct, Ken? Ken, you want to weigh in on that? Um, yes, that's correct. Um, we we bring it after the leadership team has um, reviewed it and then uh, balance it against the guiding water principles. And that that if if it were to go forward for council action, it, it would be based upon those guiding water principles. Okay. Um, I guess with that being said, once again, are there any questions, comments with regards to the proposed 2021 guiding water principles? Um, I have one, Kathy. Go ahead, Kathy. I just wanted to know from Nelson or Ken if they see anything that we haven't addressed in the guiding water principles or that we might uh, want to consider. No, I, I do not. I, I, I go through them every time and they're pretty detailed. They got a lot of, they cover a lot of things. So, so I have not seen any the last, last several years, anything, Kathy. Okay. But, good, but good question. Ken, if, do you want to answer that as well? Um, yeah, no, we're very comfortable. Staff is comfortable with the guiding water principles. They, they really originally stemmed out of our um, water supply principles in our raw water right. master plan. Uh, we were modeled after that. After that, so they they really track well with the city's overall um, process for acquiring water rights and managing water rights that we do have and protecting them. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions of the board? Looking at everybody on the screen, I'm not seeing any hands raised. Um, if not, um, we need a, a motion in a second to recommend the guiding water principles for approval by the city council. Kathy? I would move to um, approve the proposed guiding water principles and send to the city council. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll okay. second that, Todd. Okay, um, <clears throat> we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Todd, Hearing who did you take the second from? Because we had uh, oh, we, we, Roger I saw and Roger Scott at first. the same I think, time. I think the tie goes to Roger there. Okay. So. Sorry, Sorry, Scott. Um, anyway, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Um, Thank you. Sure. So next item is 8B, which is the bonus ditch change application. Scott, I know you um, maybe mentioned you need to abstain from this discussion. Yeah. So for disclosure on the record, um, the bonus ditch company has historically been, uh, um, has used our firm for counsel. Wally Grant was their longtime attorney and he's now retired. And the company came and asked if I could take a look at the city's submitted application under the bylaws for the ditch company. And our firm undertook that obligation. So we are uh, conflicted with participating here, but I can turn my uh, microphone off and my uh, video off and you guys can, can move forward and I'll join you back on the other side. If that's okay with you, Mr. Williams. Yeah, that, that's fine. Thank you for disclosing that, Scott. Okay, um, with that, um, we'll let, give a second here for Scott to kind of disconnect. There we go. Um, I guess with that, Ken, do you wanna go ahead and lead us through the, the change case application? Yes, um, thank you, Todd. So the city of Longmont um, owns just a little over one half of the shares of the bonus ditch company. Um, two major areas that we got those shares, one is on some of the city's open space, uh, Sandstone Ranch in particular, that area out there, as well as the Golden Farm property, which is that property east of our wastewater treatment plant north of Ken Pratt Boulevard. Um, those two open space properties um, got about two, a third of our shares. About two thirds of our shares came as part of the annexation of the Irwin Thomas property. And that property is immediately east of the um, Left Hand Creek, where it crosses under Kim Pratt Boulevard and immediately south of Kim Pratt Boulevard. We received uh, about two thirds of our share there, 34 of the 100 outstanding shares in the company. 
So as a result of owning a majority interest in the company, as well as um, the need to move um, those water rights uh, forward for use by the city, uh, it's standard practice for the city to go into water court and apply for a, a change of water rights. Um, this particular change case is a little bit different than many of our other change cases for two reasons. One is um, the bonus ditch is extremely low on the creek. Its point of diversion is actually east of Main Street. And uh, as a result, uh, for a good portion of the summer, the, the, the water supply that, that meets its decree um, comes as return flow from upper ditches rather than water that comes out of the uh, virgin water that comes out of the mountains. Secondly, uh, part of its decree is met by Left Hand Creek. Uh, and, and so that obviously we wouldn't be able to move any of that Left Hand Creek water up Left Hand Creek, wouldn't, wouldn't be anywhere to, to put it for us. So as a result, um, this change case will not involve an actual change of the water right up to either our water treatment plants or to Button Rock or any of our up, upper diversion points. Uh, in essence, what we're doing is changing the use of the water from irrigation to um, primarily augmentation purposes. And we'll, we'll leave, basically leave that water in the St. Vrain Creek um, at, at the point of diversion and receive credit in the stream for that water. For that portion of the water that is um, that came from the open space parcels, all of those open space parcels have augmentation requirements from previous gravel mining operations. And so um, those shares will be, be used uh, only for augmentation of those gravel pits, um, which is basically leaving that water in, with that open space purpose. Um, the, the two thirds of the water will be changed for all augmentation use for the city, um, primarily because the city has a fairly significant uh, downstream uh, augment or downstream return flow and augmentation requirements, primarily return flow from operation of our upper ditches. Uh, that allows us to use use all of the historical diverted, historically diverted water and then meet the return flow obligations with something like the bonus ditch water. Um, that part is a pretty much standard um, change case. In addition to changing the use, we will also change the point of diversion from the decreed point of diversion up to what we call the St. Vrain Creek pump station number one. Um, that diverts water just immediately downstream of Main Street to a pump station that pumps it up into the oligarchy ditch for delivery to Union Reservoir. That way, any of the excess bonus water that's in excess of either our return flow augment obligations or our um, augmentation requirements from the gravel pits, we then will be able to put that excess water into Union Reservoir, store it for delivery in the winter because some of the augmentation requirements for the gravel pits include delayed return flow obligations in the winter time period from when the irrigation use um, return to the stream uh, at a later date. So that, that allows us to meet those uh, wintertime return flow obligations. So that we, we believe that's gonna work very well for us. And uh, we're fairly confident that we have a, you know, a good case and good, good records. We'll be able to move forward with that case. However, as part of that case, um, there's two things we're doing. One is um, there will be times when there's either a free river or there, the, the call um, on the South Platte River, which is downstream of this point. We won't have to worry about the call on the same rain above us because this water is below basically all the ditches in the, in the basin other than about the last chance and hayseed are about the only ditches below us. But this, the South Platte is below us. So if that call on the South Platte is junior to this case, then we'll be able to appropriate those return flows that um, historically hit the stream uh, and we'll be able to move them into Union Reservoir and store them for later in the winter when um, almost all, 
almost all winter long, there's at least some call on the Platte River because they have so many reservoirs out there to fill. The second thing we need to do is actually move that water up the St. Vrain Creek from the current point of diversion to the new point of diversion for the St. Vrain Creek pump station. So that's called an appropriative right of exchange. We're appropriating the right to exchange that water up to that point. So both of those are new appropriations. And whenever you go in to appropriate a water right, you have to do an overt action and prove the intent to appropriate the water. Um, for, a, for a typical water user, or at least in the past, what you did is you went out and you put a sign on the side of the river or you started digging a ditch. Um, in the municipal world, it's a little different. Uh, really the courts have held that uh, to form that intent to appropriate the water, it really takes an action of your legislative body. In our, in our case, it's the city council and they take action by passing a resolution authorizing staff to appropriate that water. Um, in essence, um, staff can't just say, we wanna appropriate the water and, and file in water court for a new appropriation. So this is uh, fairly standard for new appropriations. We actually don't do a lot of new appropriations, uh, probably maybe once every 10 years is all we do it. But when we do it, um, we need to um, take this action formally with council. So what we wanted to do today was um, uh, present that um, scenario to the water board and allow water board um, to make a recommendation. What we're asking for is a recommendation to city council to approve a resolution authorizing staff to file for uh, two new appropriations for the bonus ditch as part of our uh, bonus ditch change application. And we'd be happy to answer any questions you have about either the change case or the process uh, we'll follow uh, going to city council. Okay, okay. thank you, Ken. Um, Roger, it looks like you have a question. What, what's the, uh, what are the downsides of this change from the, the users of the bonus ditch people? I, I mean, is there much negativity along with our moves? I'm just kind of curious. Um, th there really isn't, obviously, um, because the uh, other shareholders have an interest in the company. Um, they're going to watch the case real closely, and they did well, what is the sensible thing to do. They had their, the board you know, engage their own legal counsel to, to, to look at our application. Um, this is actually the second, uh, this will be the second change case for the bonus ditch. Um, the St. Rain and Left Hand Water Conservancy District previously changed, I believe it was just one share of the company, but they did do a change case, which um, set um, some of the standard uh, standards for bringing a change case on the bonus ditch forward. Um, they, did a, they did a change case that was specific to the share they owned and the location they took it from. So our engineering report will be slightly different from theirs but the numbers come out pretty similar. Um, uh, in reality, um, the other shareholders, um, Boulder County owns almost the rest of the shares <laughs> and um, they have no interest in changing their shares because their shares are in open space and their open space um, re regulations don't allow them to move water off their open space. So they'll, they'll not be changing their shares now we do own um, 16 and a half shares jointly with the St. Uh, Boulder County on open space where, where either we own the open space or it's owned jointly. And then, so the county has an inherent right in that. So for those joint shares, um, the county will be a, uh, their, their half interest or their undivided interest in those shares will be changed. And so they'll, they're, kind of a, a joint applicant. We've been working with the county um, since about January, uh, working out any issues we have with them. And they actually just did sign a consent form to consent to this change. So that helps a lot. That, that indicates their acceptance uh, of the project moving forward. There are four other minority shareholders have uh, like a half a share each. And they are actually um, 
on the bottom end of the ditch. They just have small, you know, five acre tracks that they irrigate their lawn with. Um, all four have indicated uh, no concerns with the change case. I have um, one of those four have actually already signed a consent form to include their shares. Um, it's actually a benefit uh, if you include your shares, if you're a minority shareholder, because then all it does is add an additional legal use to them. It doesn't take away any rights they have to, to irrigate with it. And it can't be used unless they give permission to use that. So one of the four, I already have a consent form. Two of the four have um, indicated they intend to send me a form. They just got to get it notarized. And the fourth one is looking at it and they say, well, we'll never annex or never do anything. We're not sure we want to do it, but they, they understood what we're doing and have expressed no objection or, or concern about it. So we believe uh, we've received at least either overt um, action from and consent forms from all the other shareholders or at least uh, an expression of no concern about it. So it, we, we do believe it'll move forward fairly easily. Thank you. Allison, go ahead. Um, thank you, Ken. Has, is there a Catlin approval required in any of the bylaws? Um, the bonus ditch, ditch bylaws require approval by the company um, board of directors uh, for a change. And we did actually go to their uh, board uh, this last month and the, and the board of directors, well, we actually asked them to call a full stockholders meeting to make sure the stockholders could give input to the board at the same time uh, as we were presenting our case. So they had a special stockholder meeting um, and their, uh, the stockholders did not express uh, concern. And so the board did go ahead and approve our uh, change uh, application. Um, second question, if I may. Are there any, any intervening water rights on the exchange reach? Um, there, there are no currently no intervening water rights. Um, actually, it, um, the only intervening water right is the city of Longmont's recreational in-channel diversion uh, flow, uh, which is, goes right through this, this section. Um, so during those periods where we want that flow, we'd be able to leave it in and take credit. Um, we'd really only move it up during the spring runoff when there's more flow. For us, for us, it's actually a little bit more interest for most of the year to keep it in the stream and keep our, our greenway going well and receive the credit. But there are no intervening water rights. And um, so really the, the, the appropriate right of exchange would most likely not even not, not be, you know, come into play unless somebody tries to move water up above us and through our reach. So we'd have both this appropriate exchange as well as the RICD to protect us in that scenario. So I apologize, I haven't looked at the application in detail. Is uh, ERISID one of the uses that's specifically applied for? Um, we didn't explicitly include our RISID filing for this. However, if, if, we're, if we're getting credit, if we're planning on taking credit down below, this is just below our RISD filing. So if we're taking credit below it, I think not only would this case protect us, our RISD would, would help pull that water down to the point of diversion and where we want credit for it. So um, I, I think they'll work in tandem, yes. Okay, and is augmentation one of the uses that's being claimed? I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that one. Augmentation? Yeah, augmentation is, our, is really our primary okay. um, use that we're, change of use that we're applying for. Okay, so in that case, you could just include it in the, as a, an exchange source, potentially? Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, one of the things this will do for us is uh, there are augmentation credits even below around the sandstone ranch reach that, that some of the shares came off that sandstone reach and, and so it'll be meeting those existing augmentation requirements that we're actually meeting with other water rights and that will free up those water rights to, to better facilitate delivery of water to some of our agricultural water users on our open space. 
And then of course, the second thing is it really helps us out with making sure that flow remains in our greenway, um, which is a benefit for that, a, a dual benefit. Thank you. Thank you. And Ken, I've got one question. Um, <clears throat> in the map that you guys sent out, there's a St. Brain Creek pump station number two. Um, you mentioned the number one. Um, what would be in, in that St. Brain Creek pump station number two? Is it basically the intersection of the St. Brain River and Highway 119? How would that fit into kind of your future plans? Um, and I, I believe that's a future pump station to be constructed. Is that right? That is correct. Yeah, we have both the St. Rain Creek pump station number one, which we have constructed and have used and are using. And then St. Rain Creek pump station number two is to be built. Um, it was located um, on the St. Rain Creek just as it goes underneath Highway 119 out by the Del Camino area. That pump station would then go into a pipeline that pumps up to Union Reservoir. Uh, that does a number of things. There's more water, of course, down below the confluence of Boulder Creek and St. Rain Creek. Also, all of the water rights that uh, are, all the irrigation has return flows, um, as well as this water that we deliver down, once it hits that point um, is appropriatable. And so we could appropriate it. But also we could leave this water, rather than take it out at pump station number one, once that one's constructed, we could leave it in the stream uh, for a greater reach of the stream and, and to get it through more of our greenway and then be able to pull it down below where it's, it's had the opportunity to, to benefit our, our greenway, the lower half of our greenway, as well as um, supply the pump station number two. That's a project that's probably years and years out yet, but we want we always include it um, in all of our filings and just just so when it does happen, we don't ever have to go back. Okay, that makes sense. Um, Kathy, did you have any questions, comments on this? No, I'm just trying to make my dog be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That sounds good. Um, all right, if there's no other questions, comments, um, we need a, a recommendation to the city council of um, approving a, a resolution for the, um, the change case. Someone, someone wanna make that motion? I'll make it. All right, Roger makes the motion, is there a second? Allison is doing the second on this one. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that motion carries. Um, so that resolution will be provided to the city council for approval to in advance of the, the water change case application or in advance of it. Um, so it's, it's 340 right now. Um, I mentioned um, before the meeting got going, I actually have an obligation this afternoon. And as you get into the Windy Gap firming project update and the allotment contract, um, I think now is a good time for me to kind of step out. I'm going to let Kathy run the meeting so I can hopefully make my son's football game yet this afternoon. So anyway, with that, I'm going to turn it over to, to Kathy. And um, I think Scott will join back in. And anyway, we'll go from there. So thank you, guys. <laughs> okay. Good luck in their game. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. Thank you. Okay, see you guys. Okay, so I think that we are at the uh, items from staff when you get firming project update. And I think that's on you, Ken. Thank you very much, um, Vice Chair. Um, yeah, two things I wanted to do. I wanted to just give you a quick update on the when you got firming project. Um, we actually got um, possibly good news on the federal lawsuit today. The, the judge uh, sent out a re, uh, uh, order, I guess I call it an order a request. I, I think it, you'd call it an order um, to all of the participants uh, in the lawsuit who in their um, motions and in their filings referenced uh, any part of the federal record uh, of the project. Uh, ask them to send a uh, electronic version of an, an excerpt of that part of the record that they're referencing in their arguments or the motions. 
uh, to the court, which um, at least tells us that the judge is looking at the case. <laughs> um, it, you know, it, it has been, uh, it, it was a year last July when the final motion, um, motions were made and the final evidence taken and um, been pretty much radio silence for a year and three months now. <laughs> And so um, it's, it's good news that at least uh, that much is happening. Uh, the judge did give a short turnaround time to provide that information uh, the end of October, which uh, is a little surprising, uh, which is good news because if the judge gets that information, um, it's certainly hopeful uh, that by the end of the year, we might actually have a ruling on that case. Um, if, if that means the judge is looking at it and trying to put together a, a, a decree. <laughs> uh, so that is good news. Um, as far as the project itself, uh, the project did get um, a cost estimate from the contractor. Um, as you may remember, Barnard Construction out of uh, Missoula, Montana, uh, or Bozeman, Montana. Um, is the uh, contractor for the for the uh, job? They have been working about a year now on on submittals and design of the coffer dam and uh, getting getting uh, some site grubbing done and a few other projects, moving people in, um, such that when um, the federal lawsuit is finally settled, we'll be able to start construction immediately. Um, but because their original uh, bid uh, for construction had uh, had a, a latest start date of the end of October, um, did have to get a new number from them uh, for construction um, if we can start uh, by the next spring, basically um, about a six month extension. That was uh, about a four and a half million dollar uh, addition. So short, short, short answer it runs it's running us about a million dollars a month um, to to uh, wait out the federal lawsuit. But that's not a, a real significant increase um, in, you know, on a $480, $500 million project uh, with with contingencies and engineering about $600 million. So it sounds like that sounds like big dollars, but but it it's a very reasonable amount um, that gets us that buys us that contract and that contractor and everything will stay on on track for the next six months. Um, as far as uh, some of the mitigation, one of the, the biggest projects is the uh, connectivity channel uh, around the Windy Gap Reservoir on the Colorado River on the West Slope um, that has been bid out. Um, and it's actually a design build. So they did a 30% design and then they bid out um, the actual remainder of the design, the final design and construction. Uh, and the firm by the name of Concrete Structures got the final bid. They'll actually be the general contractor. And I don't have who their engineer is, uh, honestly, but um, they're, they're, they actually, we started draining the Windy Gap Reservoir on the Colorado River on Labor Day. It's now down to essentially dead pool uh, so that they can do the geotechnical investigations uh, to where the, the dam will actually be reconstructed out away from the railroad tracks, leaving a, a path wide enough for the um, construction of a connectivity channel. And so um, all of that is going well. Uh, again, there's a little bit of money that still needs to be had to, to put together the total project, but um, we're very close on that. So that's, that's going well. Um, and then um, getting back to the final allotment contract, as, as the board may recall, we came to you in um, September with the um, allotment contract for um, review and, and you recommended uh, city council um, accept that um, final allotment contract and pass a resolution approving it and, and directing the city to sign into it. Um, 
Since that time, there have been a couple of minor changes on the allotment contract. And I don't need any water board action on this unless one of the water board members feels um, that the, the changes or substantive changes that, um, that you feel um, you either can't accept or, or need, need changed. So I'm gonna share my screen and walk through the changes in the allotment contract. Uh, really honestly, the, um, the city of Longmont, there's, there's two ways of a participant funding. You can either give cash um, to uh, the project, which is what the city is, will be doing, or you can um, participate in some pooled financing. The changes were actually for the benefit of the pooled financing folks. And so it doesn't apply to Longmont. So that's why we, you know, we did feel that they were not subsidized to Longmont, but I'd still like to share my screen. I'll just run through them real quick. It hopefully won't take me too long, but, um, but I'd like to highlight them real quick. So let me try to share my screen here. And uh, there we go. Does everybody have that? I, I do, everybody okay? Okay, so. Um, the first change in the in the agreement was in section 5.7, which is amendments, which allows um, the future amendment of this agreement without having to do a completely new agreement. Um, as you can see, um, it, it requires 75% of the lotties, so that that uh, protects Longmont, protects the lotties, but leaves a little window open uh, for uh, joint times when all the lotties. Um, feel uh, amendments necessary. The change in this section is the bottom part here, um, which basically the, there was a concern. Um, so some project participants will bring cash and will participate participate in the pooled financing. Um, and some per, uh, may want to do all pooled financing, but may decide later to bring some cash. So there was a concern um, that since this contract, um, like right now it says Longmont will bring all cash. It says other entities will bring all, will be all pooled financing. This allows uh, minor uh, modifications to the payment. And in this case, it's Longmont's contract. So it says an amendment uh, to the payment. Um, if we were to decide we wanted to participate in the pooled financing to allow us to do that, upon giving uh, notice without having to adjust the contract. So unlikely that we would do that, but um, uh, there's, there's that possibility. Then um, let me go down. Uh, let's see here. To 6.4. Um, on 6.41, we simply uh, Longmont is a utility enterprise and it's the agreement simply says that we warrant that we're a utility enterprise, which we are. <laughs> so that's a, that's a fairly easy um, one. And then that was really all of the amendments that, that pertain to Longmont. Um, so, but I will go on down here to, uh, there's a couple of recitations to section 8.18. Um, oops, let me think I'm, oops, there we go, sorry about that. Um, 8.18 is a brand new section for the loan allottees. Again, it won't apply to Longmont, but a number of the loan allottees, um, after they got to looking at, at the cost for doing a 30 year note, decided they wanted to do a 20 year note the problem was that some of the lotties didn't have the money to do a 30 year note. So they had to craft language in the agreement that allowed participants to basically have what was essentially a 20 year note, but it, that would get paid off over 30 years um, so that there was never a question of whether at the end of the 20 years, are they um, still on the hook for payment of the bonds out to the end of the 30 years. Um, that became a little bit of a wordsmithing exercise with the bonding companies, um, mostly because when that, when this language is reviewed by somebody who might 
want to buy these bonds, they're comfortable that they have the assurance that everybody that's taken a, a bond out is on the hook uh, to pay that bond off. Essentially, what, what, what we have in the, for the pooled financing is that the pooled financing participants have a step up provision that says, if one of the other participants forfeit or don't make their payments, everybody else will step up to make that payment. Um, they'll get that capacity, they'll, they'll earn that, they'll own that interest. And there's some pretty stiff penalties for people um, step, you know, not doing their bonds. But um, this gives a lot more assurance to the bondholders that everybody in the project will pay. Um, I don't think there's really much concern about that. We just got done in 2017 paying off a 30 year note on the parent Windy Gap project. Not a single payment was missed in any of the 30 years by any of the participants. So um, I, I would be stunned that anybody would um, pay off, uh, you know, would let go of a uh, $17,000 an acre foot uh, project when it's 70,000 to go get CBT. So, uh, but you know, the, the bond, you want that, that for the bond. So again, that doesn't apply to Longmont <clears throat> other than it is in our agreement. So that's really all of the changes um, that we have in the agreement and why we, we feel that they're really not um, too substantive for Longmont, um, but we wanted to bring it to the board since you had already approved it. And we will be going to council either next, uh, a week from Tuesday on the 27th or on November 10th, one of those two dates for that final approval. And we wanted to give the water board an opportunity if anybody had a concern on any of those changes uh, to let us know and then we'd so inform council. Okay, thanks, Ken. Any questions from anybody on the board about this? I'm not seeing any, so I think we can oh. move on. Thanks, Ken. Thank uh, you. Is there any water resources engineering projects then? Um, yes, I, I'd like to go ahead and do that uh, for Jason. He's a little uh, preoccupied right now. In fact, he's not even in the state. Um, his house is one of the uh, uh, evacuee houses for the uh, Cameron Peak fire. Uh, fortunately, it's a voluntary evacuation. Okay. Um, uh, he lives um, north, and just a little bit east of Carter Lake. And uh, actually on the, uh, over the weekend, the wet, property west of Carter Lake was under a mandatory evacuation and his, his was a voluntary evacuation. So, you know, <laughs> that's a little exciting when it happens to you. Uh, but anyway, um, he would have reported <laughs> to us today. Um, three, three projects, we've already talked about the Button Rock um, outlet repair project. Um, so if there are any further questions on that, I'd be happy to answer them. Two other projects, uh, the South St. Rain Pipeline, which is uh, the very last of our flood repair projects. Um, is is well underway. Uh, the main, the prime contractors completed all their work. They, their sub, um, basically we had to have a contractor come in and put additional manholes in the pipeline because some of the re lengths of the pipeline were too long to be able to be cleaned. So put in some manholes and now they're all in and the sub who's gonna actually come in and jet and clean out the pipe, um, we'll be doing that, that next. And then the prime will then be a prime contract will then be able to line a couple sections of that pipeline. That pipeline will then be up and new. So that um, sub is was scheduled to mobilize at the end of this week. Um, I'd be stunned if he gets in the end of this week, <laughs> uh, given given that uh, Lyons is under a uh, evacuation notice. Uh, uh, they're, they're, they're not mandatory, but they've been notified. Uh, well, as the fire is unlikely to be completely contained and, and, and by the end of the week, but hopefully after some uh, cool weather this weekend, I'm really hopeful that it will. So depending on the fires, probably early next week that um, contractor will be in to work on that. So virtually two of our three contractors <laughs> uh, are, are being held up. The final project was the pump station on the South St. Rain pipeline that, that um, Jason has um, mentioned before. Um, that is, we're getting some funding um, to build a pump station 
to pump some of the water from the South St. Green Pipeline and North St. Green Pipeline. The contractor um, was selected for uh, the design engineer for that was selected, um, Burns and McDonald engineering consultants. Um, they've executed a contract. Um, the kickoff meeting for that design effort is scheduled for the first week of November. So that design should be um, well underway and, um, and hopefully finished um, early next year so that uh, we can do that uh, construction next spring. So that's all I have on the uh, construction projects right now. Great. Uh, any questions from the board on that review? Okay, seeing none, I think we can move on. Uh, any items from the board? Um, review of major project listing, many things scheduled for future board meetings. Nothing. Oh, okay, and um, is there any, Heather, maybe you know any water board correspondence? Only what was attached in your packet. Okay, so nothing new. Mm -mm. All right, and um, I see the only thing I see down here for items tentatively scheduled for future board meetings is the cash and lieu review that we do um, periodically. Uh, four times a year, and so that will be in December. Okay, any other questions or comments from staff or board? Roger? Go ahead, Roger. I We can't hear you, Roger. I'm here, can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah. Heather, are you there? Yes, Heather? I am, I'm here. Yeah, well, I got a text on some meeting times from 5 to 7 p.m. What, what did you originate that about inviting can attend? I thought it had to do with our board meeting being shown at a different time, but no, I haven't sent any text messages right. out. Forget I said anything. <laughs> okay. Mystery text. There you go. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Okay, anything else from the board? <laughs> Doesn't look like it. Well, uh, I guess with that, we're ready to adjourn then. If nothing else going. So thanks everybody. And we almost made it for Todd's early departure, but it was good. I like to hear all your um, summaries, Ken. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Bye everybody. Bye, thank you. See you later.